on a scale of one to 10, how perplexed would you be if you gave someone the answers to a test and they still failed? And to add insult to injury, they blame you for their failure. Sounds like bullshit, right? Well, I'd like to welcome you to the logic of the WNBA. In 2022, Kelsey Plum, point guard for the Las Vegas Aces, had this to say about wages in the WNBA. You know, we talk about the CBA, right? So the collecting bargaining agreement. And uh, in the NBA, um, they have percentages of revenue shared for the players. That's because their CBA it negotiates where the, you know, if the owners are making certain types of money, they get that as well. Got it. In the WNBA, that's not the case. It's one of those things that we, we are not asking to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking you to get paid the same percentage of revenue shared. And don't get me wrong. It's not just plum with this mindset. Many WNBA players have spoken up about the alleged pay disparity between the WNBA and the NBA. But why haven't they received the pay increases they feel entitled to? Let's look back at Brianna Stewart's reaction to a suggestion that would undoubtedly bring in new fans, resulting in more revenue for the league. I got a question. N not your average fans, people that don't watch WNBA basketball, what can we do to get those fans to tune in? And I was like, why can't we lower the goal to at least nine, nine and a half feet? Because I think for somebody that don't watch WNBA basketball, to have women dunking on other women would definitely bring more excitement to that game and have, you know, those guys that don't watch WMA basketball tune in and you get more fans that way. What do you think about that? I mean, my, my thought on it is, you know, I've been playing basketball on a 10 foot hoop my whole life. So to move it to nine and a half, it's gonna take a long time to get used to that. And then also like, we're only playing basketball to dunk. Like, I'm not sure. Now you think a seven time NBA all-star and one of the greatest scorers in NBA history would know a thing or two about sports entertainment, but I guess not. You see, the most interesting thing about all of the protesting surrounding the wage gap in the WNBA is that the players would make more money if their league generated more income. It's simple. NBA commissioner Adam Silver stated that the WNBA loses roughly $10 million per year, never generating a profit since its inception. So Kelsey and other players with the revenue shared argument where is your league supposed to get the money to increase your revenue share? Because according to players like Brianna Stewart, Candace Parker, Lexi Brown, who we'll be focusing on in the reaction, by the way, lowering the rims and doing anything else that would make the league more entertaining isn't a solution. So today, we're going to be reacting to a conversation that took place on Gills Arena surrounding the wage gap disparity. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below on the WNBA players claims of wage disparity and subscribe for more reactions. Let's get into it. A lot of hate in the air. We got to talk about uh, some hate that the women's side is getting. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. pulled up to the pivot recently, uh, had Ooh. this to say about the women's game. Uh oh. And they're very talented, but so is, so is a famous ping pong player. They're just as talented as, as a like the best ping pong player is just as talented as the best basketball player. That doesn't mean they're going to get paid the same because it's because right. they play what, ping pong. It's what the people want to watch. You know what I mean? So, right. as much as I understand females wanting the same treatment as as men basketball players, it's 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 a different sport. People they're not packing out the arenas. Obviously, their TV deals aren't the same. So as much as I advocate for women and kind of the equality of the respect of their craft and all those things. I mean, you can't pay them the same thing, you know, but I do feel like they should, there, there should be a little way to make a little bit more money for right. them because they are very talented. Right. Yeah, I think, the, I think the big thing, um, obviously, when you're thinking about negotiations, labor unions, and different things like that, I don't believe there's any woman that believes she should be paid as a man gets paid. It's more about the revenue share. It's more about the percentage. And I think those things play into mm. it. And then the other side of it is treatment, mm. you know, within their own organizations. Like they're never like they, they don't. Right, it's not make, as exciting. They, no, it's it's not as exciting. It's not as exciting basketball. Yeah, you're not. They got lower the rims. I would watch a girl coming down the lane. <sighs> on another, I would watch that. They need to lower. They're the actually. All right, so let me take a minute and weigh in on 
what I just heard. So you may not like what's going on in your league, but you need to find more ways to generate income. Because again, if it's about revenue shared, there isn't any revenue to go around. You're getting your fair share based on the revenue generated by your league. You know, this gentleman says that he empathizes and he advocates, but the game is just not as exciting. And then, you know, the other gentleman wanted to go in about, oh, you know, women don't think they should be getting paid the same as men. It's about the revenue share. And I'm glad that the other gentleman cut him off because he got to the root of it, which is if the game was more exciting, then people would watch more. They would buy out the the tickets sell out the arenas, sell concessions, and do all the things that generate the NBA more money, which would net more income in the WNBA players' pockets. I think this is a really simple argument. I don't know why it's so complicated and why it's been so difficult to get this through to the WNBA players, but let's go ahead and just let them you know, have this conversation and let's tune in to see what they have to say. Um, so Lexi, you have some thoughts on MPJ's comments. Uh, floor is yours. Well, let me start by saying, I think his heart was in the right place. So I'm not here to shit on Michael Porter Jr. I do think he started, he started on the <laughs> right foot and then he just kind of put his <laughs> in, in his mouth and like, my issue with the pivot is they allow these guys to say things that they know is wrong and they just, they just are like, okay, keep, keep going, keep going. Or they'll feed them more information for them to then double down on the f- stupid shit that they had just said. So- what did anyone say in this particular clip that was wrong? Your game isn't as exciting. There is a lot of empathy for you guys. And that's why the men have been speaking out about trying to get you to change the way your game is played. Because at least the men have figured out a way to get people to show up. If nobody cared, then no one would be trying to help you. So what did what did they say that was so wrong? It seems like constructive criticism that you just don't want to hear. So, I mean, there's like a lot to unpack in his like statements, identifying us as females instead of women the whole time. Did I miss something? Are women not females? Is one like more derogatory than the other? I mean, we have male and female bathrooms. Is that like not allowed to say? I mean, I feel like now she's just kind of reaching for a reason to be offended at this point. Like just because he talked about the NBA and he's a guy, now she's looking for reasons to get offended. Because I mean, calling women females, I mean, are you not a female? Like, let's not do this. Like, we're grown. We're grown as shit. And we know what words mean. Let's not do this. Um, That we can't get treated the same. And then he he then says treatment to payment, which are two completely different things. We can still be treated with respect and they can respect our craft without us making 20 to 30 million dollars a year. Like, those things are not like those. Both of those things can happen. We cannot get paid 30 million dollars and we can be respected and treated well for being professional basketball players lowering the rims comment you already know how i feel about that it's stupid it doesn't benefit me personally at all because i'm not gonna dunk i can't dunk on a 10 foot rim and this is probably the entire problem with the WNBA. most of the women there are too short to dunk and so they internalize the issue and make it about themselves her statement has nothing to do with the WNBA. it's all about the fact that she can't personally dunk so lowering the rim won't benefit her. So since she probably, you know, just does layups and jump shots, she's probably going to go on to say the same thing that Brianna Stewart said to T-Mac. You know, I got to lower the rims. I got to relearn how to shoot and shit like that. But if you're a professional, you do what you got to do to elevate your league and to uh, increase the skill gaps. Do something to stand out. But just because lowering the rim won't benefit you because you can't dunk doesn't mean that it doesn't benefit your league overall. That's your fucking problem. All of you with this stupid mindset and argument, 
you're, you're internalizing the issue and you're making it completely about yourself when it's your league as a whole that's suffering. And your, your league is not even appealing to young women anymore for them to want to join. Why would a woman in college who has all the buzz in the world, NIL deals, she's making more money than she can count, why would she want to go into the WNBA? If even the players are not open to fixing the problems that exist. Foot rim, I'm definitely not going to duck at a nine foot rim. It's going to fuck up my shooting. It's going to fuck up everybody's well, shooting. Well, well, well. And Fucking I just feel like the way he plays basketball, like he shoots a lot of threes. I just don't, you don't, he doesn't dunk. He wants us to dunk. You dunk. Like, what are we talking about? What do you mean, what are we talking about? And how fucking old are you? So just because he doesn't dunk doesn't mean that he shouldn't ask for other people to dunk. I mean, he also is a consumer at the end of the day as well. He would be watching WNBA if they did dunk. He probably watches the NBA because they do dunk and do a lot more entertaining things. So look, I may not play in the NBA, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a fan with a valid opinion. How fucking old are we? Like, it's time to grow up. Cut the bullshit, man. It's just, it's a tired conversation. And I'm I'm very annoyed with men continuing to create these spaces to discuss these things when they don't watch our games, they don't know us, they don't ask us our opinions about anything ever. Excuse me? And like, if you don't have to watch us play, that's fine. But like, for you to just sit there and just constantly shit on our craft, our product and everything without really being tuned in, like, it's just not, it's not right. No. You're not fucking tuned in. You don't even know who watches your sport. It's men. It's men that buy your merchandise. It's men that are filling up the seats. And it's men that are subsidizing your fucking league. How dare you come out of your mouth and say something like that? It's crazy. Craziness. We're just, we're trying to help you. You guys are losing $10 million a, a year. And you're worried about revenue share? You're talking about revenue share when your league can't even generate a profit. And you got the nerve to come at the very few men that actually support you. Do you think the women watch the WNBA? How come you're not coming at them and asking them to step up and support your sport? Why is it the men's problem? Hmm? Why? Right at this point, but again, you don't have to watch anything, but y'all always want to talk about us, so might as well watch us, shit. Like, damn. Look, I'm a huge fan of Gills Arena, and they be going in. And I can tell right now the energy in this room is shifted, and I know they have problems with Miko, and they're probably not trying to create another incident. I mean, just look at Gil's face right now. He got so much to say because he he probably feels like me and so many others. We've been telling you what the problem is, but you refuse to listen. I'm really curious at how they actually break this down and tackle this and try to help her understand that she's part of the problem. Okay. I have a question. Okay. What is the problem? What is the solution? Right. Now, if we can't, one, answer the questions, and we can't come to any resolve about any of the conversations that's being had, right? So a lot of times when we do ask the question, so what's the problem? Yeah. I mean, everyone says the problem is the product. That's not the problem. There's great basketball being played throughout the entire W. But if everyone that matters is saying that the problem is with the product. Fuck what you think. This is a textbook example of the saying that the customer is always right. That saying is not meant to be taken literally because obviously the customer isn't always right. But what that saying means is that your customer determines what you should be doing as a business. They have wants and they have needs, and your job is to 
resolve them both. And we're telling you, your customer, we're telling you that the problem is with the way you play the game and that it's not exciting enough. But you have too much pride to even take that criticism seriously and take a step back and really evaluate your game. Why can't you do that? Why do you refuse to do that and sidestep the issue and point to something else? Because here's the hard truth pill that none of you want to swallow. You want to make this problem about what the men get paid in the NBA and what the men are doing and how we create spaces and talk about these issues. But the hard truth pill is this. Without the NBA, there is no WNBA. It's an existing business that hasn't turned a profit in a quarter of a century. Any reasonable businessman or woman would have closed out shop by now. But we're keeping your business open because we feel like the league has potential. But what do you do when we share our thoughts with you? You shit on us the same way that you claim we shit on you. Then we're, always, we're either getting compared to NBA, which everyone complains about how NBA is being played right now. So we either get compared to that or we get compared to the three most marketed women's college basketball games of the entire women's college basketball season. So we're stuck in the middle just getting, getting it from both sides. If we were out there playing bad basketball, like I would understand, but like that's that's not the case. So but you are playing bad basketball, not in the sense that you're not playing textbook basketball and that your game is trash. No, you're playing bad basketball when it comes to entertaining your fans, which is your core source of income. A chef could have all the best practices in the kitchen. A chef can have the latest tools and equipment and the cleanest kitchen in the country. And a chef can have all of the best staff. But if the food is shit, then the customers won't eat. It's simple. The math couldn't be any simpler. Do we have to create new math for you to understand that? You're talking about how you guys are caught in the middle between college and the NBA. But what do college and the NBA have in common? They are more entertaining than you. Marketing, promotion, our equity and our uh, media deals, all that. It's like a very, it's a very layered issue. Let me ask you this. You said you're playing good basketball. And you feel that. Yeah. So if we ask NBA players right now, are you guys playing good basketball right now? Do you think they would say yes? Consensus, it's like a consensus of, you, got, I mean, you, th- I, you guys they think- They say it publicly, so I can't, I can't hear their true opinions. But they would say, yeah, like we're playing good basketball. Yes. So the real consensus and the real judgment doesn't come from in the internal. Right. The players are always going to stay within the players' consensus. We playing pretty good basketball. We don't feel like we're playing basketball bad. But then you go to the fans and us, who we could say, hey, the basketball is shit right now when we watch the NBA. But it's not coming from our fans. It's I, coming from the people who have the voice. Whoever. People who don't right. really, really watch the game. Right. That's, that's, yeah. But when you look at the fans don't have a voice as much as we do as interpreting what the fans are telling us and feeding us and we just push it out, right? Mm-hmm. So, like I said, the solution. What is the solution to you believing that y'all are playing good basketball but the fans are showing otherwise because they're not coming out to support which would change the sales, what would change the, uh, the, the concessions and all of the things that make the, 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 the W boom. Right. And even for the NBA, the NBA would boom more if everyone felt the basketball was really being played at a high level. Now, if we got a bunch of guys scoring at a high level as they are, 70s, 60s, 50s, how many ladies in the W are doing that, putting on a show? Right. Like uh, Asia. She was, what, 50, 55? Mm-hmm. Something like that, 57? That was the only outburst. And then you got Sabrina with the three-pointers. Those are the two things that we're looking at, like, all right, that will be entertaining. 
Enrique uh, in, in Dallas. She shows some glass, some some, some stuff. Um, point guard uh, for the Aces is to uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. She shows her thing every now and again. But at the end of the day, where's the flash and dash? And we look at Juju. Mm -hmm. We look at Caitlin. Right. You look at Angel. Right. These are girls who are in college that give an inter inter entertainment quality, but they're not in a W. So when you talk about the solution, it's like, all right, you hear a bunch of people giving their opinion on the problem. We got to figure out how you guys can deliver the solution so it can be delivered to you guys. Right. Because if there is no the solution, it's like you got to deal with everybody keep identifying the problem. But it's just... Yo. For as long as I've watched this show, I don't think I've ever heard McCants cook like this. I mean, this man has some of the wildest takes in basketball I've ever heard, and I'm often infuriated listening to him speak. But I have to give it to him here. I mean, this man laid that out in a very empathetic and coherent way. Like, I don't think it could have been said any better. And I want to pivot really quickly. The whole comment around, oh, well, it's people that don't even watch the WNBA that have the most criticism. So basically, we don't have to listen to them. They're just noise. When that's the worst mindset to have when no one supports your league and you need their support. These are potential customers that you're talking about. You don't only market to your core fans if they're in the minority. You want to keep growing the fan base of your league, which would then increase <laughs> your revenue share. Again, if the problem is how much you get paid and the league is paying you what they have to give you, then you need to market to the potential customers that would like to watch your product, but can't because it's boring. So commenting on the fact that it's people that don't watch the WNBA that have the loudest voices is irrelevant because those are the people that you need to be trying to reach 24-7. 24-7. If your fans are wrong and you're right, then you need to lay out what the problem is as McCant said, and what the solution is. I haven't heard both coming from any WNBA players. All I've heard is that we don't get paid enough. The men's league gets paid this, and it's not fair. That's all I've heard. And I, and I completely understand where you're coming from, but it's like we're getting shit on because our team, our league is so small and so talented like those outbursts, like, those outbursts are hard because you have a lot of good players, yeah. players yeah. on your team. Yep. No, 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 no. You're not getting shit on because your league is small. In fact, you're not getting shit on at all. This is constructive criticism. See, this is the problem when you're dealing with people that can't take any form of criticism at all. They think that any form of criticism is an attack on their character an attack on their core being and who they are. When no, we're critiquing the product and we're giving you advice on how to make it better for us. We've been nothing but clear on what our, our issues are. And we haven't shit on you. And the problem is not that you all are super talented, which means that your league is evenly matched to where no person can stand out. No, your game is fucking boring. How can you tell who really stands out if you're handicapping the way you play the game? How can you tell? So it's like, yeah, you'll, you'll get a, maybe a 50 ball here, a 40 ball there, but it's hard. And we actually be d up. Like, right. I tell y'all that all the time. Like, maybe we'll play less defense to, like, up the entertainment value which I completely understand but like the people watching got to understand when that happens like we're getting yelled at by our coaches and all these things so it's like it's a cycle and I think we're getting there you know we don't take as many threes as the NBA does yet I think we're heading in that direction 
I think this draft class and next year's draft class, I think they're going to make a big effort to keep these players in the league, to keep the eyes on the league. But, like, that has nothing to do with us. All right. But why doesn't it have anything to do with you? That's the problem. You guys are only worried about yourselves as individual players and not a group of individuals representing an entire league. You all are in it for yourselves. Again, why should these young women who have all the buzz in the world in college join your league for that buzz to fizzle out because you guys refuse to do the things that would make your league more entertaining? Why should they have to suffer? Because you don't want to get up and do the actual work to solve your problem. Why should they? <clears throat> because I did my research on all of it. Um, all right, let's go, Gil. The problem is that the WNBA girls that are in there now are too selfish to sacrifice today for the future. Mm -hmm. From day one, they handy. What have we been saying this entire time, guys? Each and every one of these complaints are sourced at the individual level. It's, I don't get paid enough, but let me complain about this as if it's a global issue for everyone. But I'm really only worried about me and my pockets. Because if I was worried about everyone, I'd be telling everyone, hey, we need to do these things to make our league better. Renegotiating the CBA isn't going to do anything for you if the league doesn't have money to give you. I don't know how else to make this any more clear than it already has been. Do what you need to do to get people in the fucking seats. Point blank. I don't care about your coach yelling at you. I don't care about the lack of defense you play. It's not my job as a consumer to worry about what the fuck happens in your locker room. My only job is to buy a ticket and be entertained. Handicapped American girls, right? So the American girls, if you're born in America, you have to go to college and play to a certain age, right? right? Overseas girls who have no following, right? You don't have an American following, but because you turn pro at an early age, because there's no high school basketball, you can come into the NBA or the WNBA at 18, 19 years old. Well, the product that has the following here has to wait. So you're, you're sitting in college. Now think about how college basketball is. For the most part, it becomes dinosaurish. Right. So for three years, whatever wild horse came into college basketball with their style out of high school has been whipped into a team the type system, of player, yeah. a system player. When that system player gets into the W, she follows the rules. Mm -hmm. The problem with the W is if you don't allow the youth to come in and change the game, change it. Right. You think about the, you, what I'm saying is you think about the Jujus and the Kellys and all those guys, if they come into the league right now, Tarasi them can't physically keep up with these girls, which means get the fuck out of the league already. Mm -hmm. Retire, retire, retire. These girls is too fast, they're moving too fast at a speed you can't keep up with. But if I get to play against another 40-year-old, because we get to sit in here at 40 years old, it is easy to play basketball then. Okay. But if I got to stick yeah. someone that's, t think about Jeff Teague when he retired, right? At so is Gil suggesting that the WNBA players are aware of the real issues as to why their league doesn't generate income and why their revenue share is the way that it is? Is he suggesting that they're masking the problem as something else to justify staying in a league as long as they can? Because realistically... Because realistically, if they made the league more entertaining and more welcoming to these younger, explosive players, the older players wouldn't be able to keep up with them and they'd be forced to retire earlier. But by keeping the league exactly the way that it is, you can stay in the league longer and collect your paychecks much longer. 
So sure, you want to get paid more. And you'll say that the issue is with the CBA and the contracts and the revenue shared. You'll say that because that would get you a raise. So it's not necessarily the worst argument to have. But you do know for sure that your league doesn't generate income because you're not entertaining enough. And maybe you won't voice that to increase your longevity in the WNBA. Is that what he's suggesting? I'm not quite sure. But if he is, that's interesting. And it bolsters his point at the very beginning when he stated that none of the women in the WNBA want to fall on the sword for the next generation. None of them really do. And quite frankly, even if I don't believe the speculative narrative that I just drew up about what he may be saying, I do absolutely believe that none of them are willing to fall on the sword for the future generations coming into the WNBA and for the well-being of the league. At 30-something, just because somebody was moving, like, I can't keep up with these dudes, I'm out. Make room for somebody else. So what ends up happening is the product, the, the, the thing that pushes the W into another category of money is sitting in college. Yep. It's, and it's been sitting in college. It's, it's always sitting. All your stars. Since our draft class 2018, I think our entire first round picks are still actively mm -hmm. playing. But it has taken so many years for us to get our own names mm -hmm. and faces that whatever hype we had in college it's lost. It's like yeah, non-existent yep. unless you're at an active social media, do other stuff. But then you've got to go to Europe and play. Now you're dark for eight First months. thing she now said that back. I actually and agreed back. with. And everyone's like, wait, who are you again? Yeah. You're our me. draft pick? Like, like, like and it's the first thing she said that I actually agreed with because it's based on a real understanding of an issue. Not some perceived understanding of an issue that we're sidestepping the solution to. No, it's a real problem that girls are taking too long to get to the league due to some antiquated rules. You know, and any buzz that they generate in college, they can't keep up in a WNBA because no one watches the sport. So now you have to work your way up from ground zero all over again, even though you're in the highest, even though you're playing in the best league for women's basketball. Like, look at this class right here, right? The, the, the names you're saying. All of those, go, all those girls can stay in college one more year. Yeah. Right? They can stay in, in college one more year. They have the most popular names amongst, if we say just women's basketball itself. Some of those college girls would be yep. part of these, these names. Some of them might be in front of W, like yeah. one or two, like most famous basketball player right now. One of those college girls is going to be one or two, right? right? Yeah. And it's not a product inside the W, mm -hmm. which those are the girls that's going to move the needles. Those are the girls that's going to get all the lipstick thing. Think about the youth that follows them, right? Those are the ones who buys the jerseys, buys the products. Buy. They're the ones who put money into the game. The NBA, when Jordan retired the first time and they started using the youth, Kobe, KG, T-Mac, they started pushing the younger yeah. Talent. Do you think if as he didn't thing. retire, that would have happened then? Probably not. Like, who's your, that's what I'm saying, who's the Trojan horse that takes the W, right? If you're saying it's Juju, then you need to make a rule where she can come in now. She can come in now. The if and the crazy thing is, is I, I believe I'm picking up what Gil is putting down. He's saying that there are tons of young women that support women's basketball, period, across the country. And they follow Juju. So if Juju can take whatever it is that makes her lightning in a bottle right now in college to the WNBA, then those same girls would want to follow in her footsteps. And even if they can't, they'd be new fans to watch and support your sport. But by the time they can make it to the league, their buzz fizzles out. Or it fizzles out the moment they enter the league. So, yeah, this is a huge, huge problem. So 
the WNBA is missing out on generating new potential fans, young women that actually follow the sport and have followed it pretty much all of their lives. And if they can get girls early that can bring buzz to the WNBA, those WNBA players can get those brand deals and sponsorships and be the new faces of the league. Because like he's pointing out, when Jordan retired, and the NBA pushed heavily on younger players. Like I remember when AI was hanging out with, you know, rappers and coming in to the games dressed in mink coats. You know, my man generated such a crazy image that the league responded and made everybody wear suits. But he was young and he was hot and it brought attention to the NBA. Now, he did that before Jordan retired, but at the same time, he was young and he was hot and he had that buzz in the NBA. So Gil's point is a firm and strong one. And I'm picking up what he's putting down. I, I believe I am. I believe I am. The thing if about not, the rule is, you're talking about the rule. You don't have to, you don't have to leave. So I've always been very much against that, letting them come out whenever rule, because then I think some girls will come out that shouldn't. And then, then what? But, but you don't but have what to. What I'm do saying that. is, it shouldn't. Like, I'm not, con like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the NBA, Kobe is not compared to Eddie Jones, right? That's who he's in front. He's, he, Eddie Jones is an all star. This kid is 18. We're not on the same playing field. I know his trajectory, so he has a spot no matter what. Right. He's right. protected no matter what. My number one pick coming out of high school, 18, right? She is protected no, no matter what because, one, her understanding the hits, understanding being the pro, by the time she would have got in here versus... Yep. I like, she's, you know, even though she don't play this year, she battles with you guys in practice every day. By the time she... Yeah, yeah, by the time it would be her regular rookie, rookie year, she'd be three years in, she might be a dominant pro by then, right? Those are what's missing in the game. Yeah. And then same thing, get rid of some of those dinosaur-ass coaches. Right? What is your offense? Do y'all run? Do y'all run UCLA cut? No. How many teams actually run UCLA cut in the W? I don't think many anymore. Because I know, I, I know, I was a uh, what was the coach from Detroit? And, uh, um, Bill and Bear. I was watching a game where <laughs> I'm watching him. I'm like, wait, are they running UCLA? Is that the UCLA flex cut? Oh yeah. When, Becky, cut? when Becky came in. Yeah, like that. He shut all that shit down. Yeah, that's that, but that's what I'm saying. You need to put speeds in. So if you guys shoot through, y'all, y'all should be shooting 43s a game. Oh, I wait. agree. But I think, I hope in the new CBA, which is about to be renegotiated, rookie contracts become one of your guaranteed ones. I think that would help with this youth movement. 30, 35 and 35 and over. Thir 32 and over. I don't have no value for you. Let's address the, the elephant in the room really is the ultimate sacrifice that the WNBA has to make is integrity of the game and entertainment value. This is the, the ultimate... Mm, this man has been cooking the entire show. The entire show, man. Sometimes when you have a good product and you love that product, you want to cherish it and pass it down from generation to generation and make it a long-lasting tradition. But as the world changes tastes change, preferences evolve, and people grow up. Long story short, things change. And the things that were tradition, they run the risk of not fitting in anymore. And so what he's suggesting now is the way the game is played in the WNBA, that would have likely worked in the 70s, maybe the 80s, and it may have even worked for a little bit when the league was first born. But now it's time to start sacrificing some of that tradition in favor of bringing new things to the table because it's what the people want. There hasn't been a business that has stood the test of time that did not adapt, shift, move, and evolve based on their customers' wants and needs.
ultimate sacrifice the NBA made. When he's talking about when Michael Jordan mm -hmm. retired, the game changed the format that allowed players who had the abilities to be more entertaining, mm -hmm. to bring in more seat, seat fillers. So when you look at the, the WNBA, it's compared to, in my eyes, the EuroLeague. EuroLeague compared to NBA is a totally different game because right. they play with integrity, it's boring, it's real basketball. And real basketball is boring mm -hmm. because you're running sets, you're, you're talking on defense, you're doing everything you, the whole shot clock. you learn from college. Is it, but is right? that real basketball? From, from where we come from, from the, from the foundation of it, right? Yeah. So then you look at the W, it's foundational basketball yeah. from college. So it looks like still college basketball but it's just older women playing college basketball. It's not entertaining. So the sacrifice that needs to be made is when Juju and Caitlin and all of these other younger players come in, allow them to be more entertaining, take the fossils out of the game, which are running the fossil offenses. in right now that are entertaining like that. They just... Well, look, but, but we see them. But, but They're do, harnessed by but, coaches. Yeah, yeah. So but that's you got it's a the sacrifice of the yeah. game. And so much rides on... Your, if you win things, instead of just how you how you play and how you carry yourself, and I think once we can separate that as well, like I think more players will be more comfortable just hooping. Like, but there is no. I don't understand that. Allen Iverson is one of the greatest point guards to ever play the game, but he's never won a championship. And any time you bring up Allen Iverson as being one of the GOATs, the first thing anyone's going to tell you in response is that, how is he a GOAT when he couldn't lead his team to a championship? He lost in the playoffs more times than we can count. While he is one of the greatest, there are so many other greats that will outrank him because they have championships. Winning in competitive sports is paramount it's what matters the most it's not about how you carry yourself sure that may get you in hot water with the league itself but the fans don't give a shit about that do you think fans are sitting there saying oh my god steph curry is so fucking humble i just i show up to the games to see him shake hands with his coaches and huddle up with his teammate no they want to see some threes man they want to see him win they want to see a crossover Step back, wop, wop. That's what they want to see. They want to see him win. They don't care if he's mean or nice. Look at Draymond Green choking other players out. Nobody cares about that shit. They just want to see him win. Yes, you want to win, obviously. If you're a good enough player, wins will come. But if you're out there hooping and you don't win a championship, or you don't make it to the finals, like you can't be like. But that's what happens. That's what in happens the NBA in right now. How many box outs do you actually see? None. All right. The integrity of the game when it comes to box outs, cool. Rotations. How many rotations do you truly None. see happening? Right. When you talk about the sacrifice that was made, is we don't hold them accountable for the small things that made basketball basketball anymore. Right. They let that go. But be because we're women, it's like we have to do everything the right yeah, way. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So. But, that, but yeah. the right way is get it done. Get if it I done. got a girl that yeah. can come down, exactly. and Caitlin, right? Because we're women, we have to do everything the right way. So you guys get the benefit of doing what you want because you're men is what she's basically saying. And it's like, no, the theme of the message tonight from Gil and McCants is that none of the WNBA players are willing to make any sacrifices for the future of the league. And that means getting it done. That means taking more threes. That means driving to the hole harder. That means less rotations and less defense. You have to decide how you want to play as a player. I understand that the coach is going to add pressure, but do what you have to do to put more people in the seats to get the results you want and do what you have to do while winning at the same time. Those girls in college basketball, while they're very militant and while the game is somewhat traditional there, they still found a way to keep the games entertaining. Make the goddamn sacrifices.
If she, if she comes in and jack shots, that's her game, and she comes to the W and I say, we don't play like that. Yes. I'm as I a coach, as, if I'm a coach, I did a dish justice yes. to the league yes. itself by doing 100%. that. hundred percent. She is famous. She is the number one two pick because of this style. Yes. If I do not adapt to this style, I, I ruin the game agree. for you. Lowering the rim for Duncan, you're not selling your game to NBA and dudes. There's a, there's, it's called women's basketball. There's women out there everywhere that supports the game. So you lowering the rim to seven foot and six foot, who gives a fuck what we think? My daughter is not watching the game for Duncan. Right. She's not watching the game for this. She's watching the game for what it is because that's how she plays it. So that's your fan base. You have to... Oh, yeah, right, remember, no women. I'm like high school... Girls. Think, think about high school girls and college girls. Your fan base... They play a whole different, think about what I'm saying. They live a whole different style and play a whole different style than you. They dress, they, they roll their they little shorts up, thigh. Y'all got a long shorts. Y'all are old women to them, right? I don't wear long shorts. Yeah, no, I'm just saying for the most part, y'all, so y'all. How are you taking a statement made about the entire WNBA and how you guys dress and make it about yourself. You just keep reinforcing what the problem is, truthfully. That's all she's done and anyone else with the mindset like hers. You're not making the sacrifices. You're fighting for your own paycheck and you can give a shit about these new players coming in your league. You don't care if the WNBA lasts another 10 to 15 years. You're in it to get paid and get out. That's what it seems like. How on earth do you take what he's saying? Are you not listening? It's like you're you're listening to respond to the first thing that you don't like. Like, pay attention to what he's saying. He's saying that these young girls who are your fan base, they don't identify with you. Fuck all the other fans if you want to say that, right? Fuck all the other fans that want you guys to dunk and stuff. If you're not going to bend and say, lower the rim, then attack the problem from a new angle and start identifying with the younger generation that will help make your league more explosive. If you want to keep the rim the same, then do that. And here's the other thing that baffles the shit out of me. You don't want to lower the rim, but you're okay with playing with a smaller basketball. Can you please tell me how the fuck that makes sense? Why not play with an NBA regulated ball then? Hmm? Why are you okay with playing with a smaller ball, but not on a smaller rim? Doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, look. I'm real cute on that <laughs> word, please. No, think, so think about it. When you guys come into the draft, y'all got on suits, business women stuff. What, the, what do you think a 16-year-old girl is looking at? What the tell, hell is that? We need to, we need to pull up uh, my job class picture. No, I'm just saying for just consent. I don't think we have, I think no, we I'm just saying. one or two. No, I'm just Gil, bro, you wasting your time, man. It's going in one eye. It's going in one ear and out the other at this point. Like, your, your point is totally lost by her. I get what you mean, and so does McCants. But your point's totally lost, bro. I'm just saying, but they, but you, you, you are women. Yeah. But your audience is girls. Yeah. Right. So it's two different. So there's a there's a bridge that's gone because you're 22. These girls are 16, 17, 18. So the look that they they have versus what they see is very different. And I'd really like to say that that was interesting, but it wasn't simply because I'm not surprised at all. This has been an ongoing problem and conversation for many years now. And no matter what men try to do to contribute to the solution, we are seen as the problem. As you heard it from Lexi, the problem is not with the product. The problem is with mistreatment and the lack of revenue share in the CBA. But it seems like no one understands how business works in the WNBA. No one being the players, obviously. Because if the league doesn't have any money, where the fuck are you going to get it? And no matter how eloquently McCants explained the problem 
in the solution. And no matter how well Gil even attacked the problem from different angles, by the time we got to the end, we still saw that she was still taking a lot of those points and making them specifically about herself. The biggest problem in the WNBA right now is the lack of flexibility from all angles. Gil brought up that we have some really old coaches running some old defenses and offenses. That's a problem. Gil also brought up Amicant, the fact that none of the WNBA players are willing to sacrifice themselves for the betterment of the league and for the future women that are going to be joining the league. The league has stupid rules that limit the amount of attention that they could be getting from young women that are in college with a buzz. Why are young women forced to wait until they're 21 and 22 to join the WNBA when the NBA allows young men to join the league as young as 19 years old? The amount of buzz surrounding Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and even Andrew Bynum, three players that joined the league at 18, was probably more buzz than many WNBA players joining the league at 22 ever had combined. Again, these are problems that are not complex. These are problems that actually require very simple solutions. If you want more money, do what you need to do on the floor to make your game more entertaining. And that's final.